Hi everyone, it's Andrew here and I'm here today with my January book haul. This is all the books that I've managed to pick up in January. Uh, some of them were very cheap, second hand from uh, charity shops. There's been uh, some stuff from publishers, there's my unboxing and some I've bought myself from places like Amazon. So uh, let's get started because there's quite a few and uh, some of them are un aren't unboxed yet. So we're going to do everything that's unboxed first and then we're going to have a bit of unboxing at the end. So the first one I've got is The Narrow Bed <coughs> by Sophie Hanna. Um, basically it says a killer that the police are calling. Billy Deadmates is murdering pairs of best friends one by one. Before they die, each victim is given a small white book and for months detectives have failed to catch Billy or work out what the white books mean. And then a woman, scared by what she's seen on the news, comes forward. Stand-up comedian Kim Tribbett has one of Billy's peculiar books. A stranger gave it to her at a gig she did a year ago. Was he Billy? And does he want to kill her? Kim has no friends and trusts no one. How and why could she be possibly be Billy Deadmate's next target? So um, what I do is when I have a look at these books in charity shops and um, places like that, I just have a quick read of the back and I thought that sounded really interesting. And the next one is Vanishing Games by Roger Hobbs. Again, this was second hand. There's no blurb on the back, so I'm gonna go into the flap. I work alone. I may be the best thief in the world, but no one will ever know a single thing about me. Well, almost no one. A lifetime ago, I had a mentor, Angela. She taught me how to be a criminal, how to run a heist. And now, six years after she vanished and left me high and dry on a job in Kuala Lumpur, she sent me an SOS. Or at least, I think it's her. If it is, then I've got to go. I owe her that much. So soon I'll be on a plan to plane to Macau, either to see a friend or to work, walk into a trap or both. But that's the way I like it. Sometimes the only thing that makes me happy is risking my life. Time to go. So I thought that sounds very, very interesting. Uh, so it's a first person story, so it sounds very interesting. Now, the next two books I ordered from Amazon because I was taking part in... Binge Readers, Stephen King Readathon. She's listened to the audiobooks and I'm actually going to be reading them because um, I very, very seldom listen to audiobooks. It's only like when the football's on or there's something, there's nothing on TV and Paul's watching something else. I don't want to watch, I'll sit there and I'll colour and I will also listen to an audiobook. So I downloaded Dead Dark Matter in uh, at Christmas and I still haven't finished it. I'm on chapter seven now. So because uh, the book she was reading this month was Doctor Sleep, uh, which is a sequel to The Shining, I bought both The Shining and Doctor Sleep. And and uh, so I could read them both and take part in the thing. It's quite nice floppy paperbacks, even though they're mass markets. Well, you know, that's not so much, but the Doctor Sleep one's lovely. So we all know The Shining, we all know what it's about. But Doctor Sleep, if you haven't read it, this actually follows on from the book of The Shining and not the Kubrick film, which ends differently. <coughs> so this is actually based on the, the book. And it goes following a childhood haunted by terrifying events at the Overlook Hotel. Danny Torrance has been drifting for decades. Finally, he settles into a job at a nursing home where he draws on his remnant shining power to help people pass on. Then he meets Abra Stone, a young girl with the brightest shining ever seen. But her gift is attracting a tribe of paranormals. They may look harmless, old and devoted to their recreational vehicles, but the true knot live off the steam that children like Abra produce. Now Dan must confront his old demons as he battles for Abra's soul and survival. Now I've actually read this already, so um, look out for it in my wrap up where I'll tell you exactly what I think about it without any spoilers because it's a fantastic story there you know what I think about it I really enjoyed it next two books were sent to me by publishers and as mentioned in my Friday reads the first one is Angel Faces by Scott Vincent this was sent to me by excuse me uh, Matador which uh, and Troubadour Publishing That's a bit Matador and um, basically um, uh, 
god, excuse me. Vendor Care, from the Italian to avenge or have revenge. Vendor Care is an independent contractor who quite simply deal with jobs that no government or organisation can put their name to. The world's a dirty place and we are the ones who do the cleanups. We don't answer to any particular government. Beneath the sight of the public and the media, the organisation Vendicare operates a truly international task force, taking on the jobs that governments and official bodies refuse to dirty their hands on. Um, highly trained, technologically advanced and military exceptional, billionaire Vincent Natalie runs a powerful organisation that affects the world on a grand scale. Their latest mission, Angel Faces, will take them into the heart of hostile territory in France, sorry, in France, in hostile territory in Africa, to face some of the most influential and field terrorists of the modern era, but there could be far more at stake for the team on a personal level than they ever imagined. As the group faced the challenge of keeping order and peace on a global scale, will the weight of expectation post oh dear prove too much for the men and women facing the ultimate responsibility? Fabulous. Sounds absolutely brilliant, doesn't it? And I'm actually currently reading this, as I said in Friday Reads. And um, again, I'll let you know what I think of it in my wrap-up. The next one I've already posted a review of, so you know I liked it, and that was from Head of Zeus Publishing, and it was Bourbon Creams and Tattered Dreams by Mary Gibson. Obviously I'm not going to go into this because I've posted a full review which I will link down below. Um, needless to say, I thought this was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. And the blog tour's happening soon, so there'll be a lot more reviews coming out soon. So, now on to the unboxing portion of the video. So this is anything that's come that I haven't unboxed. So the first thing I've got is my book and a brew which only arrived the other day. I've, I have um, unsealed it, but I haven't opened it. So I have no idea what the book or the tea is, though. So, oh, this is in a tea. That means I can use it afterwards. Organic, oh God, you know, I really can't speak today. Organic lemongrass and apple. Ooh. Oh my God, that smells so nice. Ooh, so that's the, the tea. I want a lovely little tub. Nice for keeping things in, like change, and they keep change. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, nice book here. Oh, now this sounds quite good. I do love the way they wrap these in their tissue paper with a little sticker on it. <laughs> Let's open it up. I can't get into it. Oh, I tell you what, I just need to go to bed. I think it's been one heck of a long week. I've only got one more week, and then I'm a fortnight off. So, yay! What I do like about Book and Brew is they are hardbacks, they're always hardbacks and they're really nice stuff. So. This one is called The Martini Lunch by Suzanne Rindell. A lovely cat. Look at this hardback, it's beautiful. And it's got one of those, hang on, ooh, for those little martini glasses on the end papers. <laughs> that is so cute. It's just red and silver on the outside. Look at those martini glasses. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, I love the end papers. Yes, it's one of these ones. Like um, Bourbon Creams, it's got its own little bookmark thing in it. String bookmark. I love those. I think they're fantastic. So let's see what this one's about, shall we? This is going to be a long video. <coughs> New York, 1958. Three young adults desperate to make their mark on the world of publishing. Their choices, betrayals and passions will draw them together and change their lives forever. Cliff Nelson, the privileged son of a New York publisher, is slumming it around Greenwich Village, enjoying booze, drugs and the idea that he's the next Jack Kurak. Really? Do you really want to be Jack Kurak? No, you don't. Fresh face, Eden Katz, arrives in the city with one burning ambition, but she is shocked at the stumbling blocks she encounters. Mm -hmm. Miles Tillman, a publisher's messenger boy, is an aspiring writer who straddles various worlds and belongs to none. Their choices and sacrifices ripple out from the pages and shake our hearts, a gripping read. Ooh. So when did this one come out? Because I know these are usually quite old ones. Oh no, this actually only came out last year, so that's not bad. Yeah, so this came out last year. I, I, it's just, I, just, I just love the martini glass on the side. It's a great, great shot of uh, New York, old New York. Love it. So, yeah, that looks good. Excited to get to that one. Thank you, Book and a Brew. 
I'll put a link to their website down below as well. Their boxes are 12 .99. I think that includes the post and packaging and that's for the book and the tea. The recommended retail price on that book is 14 .99 so just so you know. So now we're on to the packages from publishers. Now most of these I actually requested so the pub sheets are actually loose. But there is one that I'm not actually sure what it is but I think I requested it but they sent me an email rather than sending me a pub sheet. For some reason Matador, Troubadour and Hedda Seuss sent a, tend to, not Hedda Seuss, Hedda Seuss email me. They um, and uh, Book Guild tend to, no, is it Book Guild? Book Guild, tend, one well, of them anyway, tend to send me a uh, post and then I have to email them instead of emailing me and me replying, which would save them money. So really they should just do that because sometimes they don't want the book and then I just don't reply. So the first one is, yes it is the phone on top, I thought it was. Um, these are a short story collection called Listening for Water and Other Stories by Sandra Warman. This is her first short story collection. I just love this shot. I love the seaside and it's not a very big book either, it's quite small. Which I quite like, nice and floppy. Okay, so this says, <clears throat> Listening for Water introduces a range of people misplaced by migration or circumstance. Over the course of 19 tales, Sandra Warman explores these moments of decision and encounter that make all the difference between salvation and disaster. The title piece describes a good man's life blighted by memories of a single failure. In others, a group of Sunday strollers witness the leap of a girl from the Golden Gate Bridge. A Ugandan in France brings her own way of honouring the death of a neighbour. And a woman discovers the lim limits of motherly love when tending to a very different kind of infant. These stories are varied in style and themes as they are in their setting. Some have no geography, four are set in Africa, two in France, others span as wide as Germany, London, Amsterdam and San Francisco. So I think that sounds really interesting and they say Sandra Warman is a professor is Professor Emerita in Anthropology at the University College of London. Sounds interesting, a first book collection. So that is Listening for Water and Other Stories by Sandra Warman. I actually quite looking forward to that one. And then this one is one from Troubadour Publishing. So this could be anything, because they've sent me loads that I've been interested in. Oh, short story collections, actually. This is, this is quite a thick book, actually. This one is... Ah, now this so has been sent out by Troubadour. It's actually from Book Guild Publishing, which is, I think, one of their subsidiaries. And this is, oh, this is quite thick, actually. Look at that gorgeous cover. Sorax Redemption by Hedley Harrison. There we go. So this one um, is on a faraway planet, women rule the world. The planet has evolved into a city-state in an apparently unoccupied wilderness. Men of subservience and breeding and social status is determined by skin colour. Ruled by a senate of black women, there is little place in the elite for the fair-haired and pale-skinned. However, below the surface of this carefully managed society, dissatisfaction is beginning to form. Sorak, a blue-eyed and pale-skinned female military officer, wants something more. In a world where any signs of rebellion are brutally suppressed, including a love interested that is regarded including a love interested that is regarded as unlawful, will Sorak ever find the haven she craves for? Now, I read that and I thought, oh my God, that sounds absolutely brilliant. I, I want to read this. Now, this one, along with Listening for Water, they, uh, they come out on the 28th of this month, which is Saturday, tomorrow. So obviously I'm not going to review these before they're released. However, these will be reviewed fairly shortly and I will let you know what I think. So that was from the Book Guild. I love getting books. I love them. Don't you just love books? The next one again has got a Troubadour pu <coughs> publishing return address. <coughs> oh, do excuse me. I know there are two in this one. Well, one of them's really thin and one's quite thick. Um, so the first one is The Wind on His Back and Other Stories by Mary Alexander. These again are both two short story collections. This is a very short story collection, but hey, I'm looking forward to it. The Wind on His Back is a collection of six short stories that explore different aspects of love. 
from a furious divorced man who refuses to forgive his errant wife, to the wife faced with losing her husband 30 years to a sudden terminal illness, to the motley group of relatives who come together to celebrate Christmas Eve. Each story has love and its offspring, pain and loss at its core. Each story can be read independently, although they are united by a common theme of love. So they're very, very small short stories, but they look quite good. Um, stories like that, the Wind on His Back is a story, there's one called The Good Samaritan, Christmas Eve, After Rick and so on. So that's not going to take long to get through so I'm going to really look forward to that one. The next one is The Colour of Red and this is by Nima Lee and it's Tales from the Cultural Revolution. Isn't that a gorgeous cover? <clears throat> and this one says, uh, 2016 marks the 50th anniversary of the outbreak of the great proletarian cultural revolution. This extraordinary yet relatively unknown period is vibrantly captured in a sequence of short stories, full of tragedy, humour and satire in a beautifully craft crafted vignettes of life at the time, both ordinary and otherwise. Set in China and based on true events that took place between 1966 and 1976, Nima Lee paints the moving human dramas behind this turbulent period in a powerful amalgam of betrayal, love, hate, ridicule and brutality. With the revival of an auth excuse me, autocratic personality cult in China today, it is a stark reminder of potential catastrophic consequences. The story includes The Helmsman, a unique portrayal of Mao as an ordinary man in an ordinary day, elevated to an extraordinary position. The Autumn's Tale will touch your heart at the face of two young lovers, while Manga recounts perhaps one of the most bizarre episodes in recent history. That just sounds absolutely fascinating. I don't know anything about China, really, other than what I see on the news. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, learning a bit more about it and reading these stories. And my last publisher package arrived today. It's got a bit ripped in the post. Oh, who cares? I love it. This fabulous. Excuse my voice. It's terrible, I know. Ooh, this is a hard work as well. Oh, it's from Suzanne at Head of Zeus. I love Head of Zeus. They are fantastic. This is called Find Me. And this one's not out until February. And it's by J.S. Munro. Um, publication date is the 9th of February next this year. And this is the cover. Isn't that gorgeous? This is obviously the finished copy. And M.J. Arledge says this is the most ingenious thriller you will read this year. Couldn't put it down. Looks good. Let's have a look. So I'm just going to read you the pub sheet. Head to these brilliant books. Five years ago, Rosa walked to Chroma Pier in the dead of night. She looked into the dark, swirling water below and she jumped. She was a brilliant young Cambridge student who had just lost her father. Her death was tragic, but not unexpected. Was that really what happened? The coroner says it was, but Rosa's boyfriend, Jar, can't let go. He hallucinates seeing Rosa everywhere, a face on a train, a distant figure on a hillside. He is obsessed with proving that she is still alive. And then he gets an email. Find me, Jar. Find me before they do. Doesn't that sound absolutely brilliant? Oh, yeah. So that one is Find Me by J.S. Monroe, who was previously known, wrote under the name of John Stock. Um, so yeah, that looks fantastic. Yeah, looking forward to that one. I do love a good thriller, so I will again let you know what I think of that later. Now, next packages are from Amazon, because Amazon uh, will be the undoing of me. They ran an offer um, on the 20th of January last, last Friday that was only valid for that day if you spent £50 on items. You could get £10 off, so I bought books, so this is came in two shipments because you know what Amazon are like. I know what this one is. Well, I know what they all are actually. The pull tabs never work. You know, Steve Donahue's right. They never work properly. So this is a book I've been trying, I've wanted for a while. And this is a biography of Clara Bow by a man named David Sten. David Sten wrote the biography Bombshell about Jean Harlow. It's the best Jean Harlow biography on the market. So uh, this, it's been out a long time. Uh, I have never read it. I've, I've wanted to read it for years. 
um, <clears throat> basically Science Green Sensation Clara Bow, uh, 1905 to 1965, the greatest box office draw of her day was the embodiment of the Roaring Twenties, Hollywood's first sex symbol and a natural talent with an independent spirit. Raised in the slums of Brooklyn by a family plagued with alcoholism and insanity, Clara capitulated to fame after, capitulated? Catapulted! to fame after winning Motion Picture Magazine's 1921 Fame and Fortune contest. Despite her overwhelming popularity, she once received 45,000 fan letters in a single month. The on-screen vitality and allure that beguiled millions would be her undoing off-camera. David Stern captures the It Girl's legendary rise to stardom and fall from grace, and its success marred by studio exploitation and sex scandals. Now, David Stern is a graduate of Yale University and an award-winning television writer whose work has been seen in such series as Hill Street Blues, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, 21 Jump Strike, and Beverly Hills 90210, and he is also the author of Bombshell, The Life and Death of Jean Harlow, which I have both hardback and paperback copy of because the payback copy has a different photos in it because that's the way I rock and roll I should went to one of my favourite stuff so the final one the final box again is one of the Amazon ones so this again was more from the £50 get £10 off and let's see what we've got okay so now I bought the next two months worth of Stephen King books for the Stephen King Readathon with Binge Reader in uh, February. We are reading, well, I'm reading something different because, and there's a reason for that. She is reading End or listening to End of Watch, which is the third in the Bill Hodges trilogy. I haven't actually read the first one yet, so I am replacing End of Watch with Mr. Mercedes, which is the first one in, in the series. Um, so. So basically this one says, who is going to be the fish in this relationship and who is going to be the fisherman? Retired cop, to Bill Hodges, retired cop tormented by the Mercedes massacre, a case he never solved. Brady Hartsfield, perpetrator of that notorious crime and preparing to kill again. Now each is closing in on the other in a mega stakes race against time from the worldwide best in master of suspense, Stephen King. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, yeah. I love Stephen King. I've read so many, but there's so many still I haven't read. So I'm glad to be doing this readathon because I haven't, you know. And the next one, we were, they were, she was going to read, I think, The Talisman, but she's actually changed uh, March's book to Gerald's Game. Um, and this one says, a game, a husband and wife game, Gerald's game. But this time, Jesse doesn't want to play. Lying there spread eagles and handcuffed to the bedstead while he looms and drools over her. She feels angry and humiliated. So she kicks out hard, aims to hit him where it hurts. He isn't meant to die, leaving Jesse alone and helpless in a lakeside holiday cabin. Miles from anywhere, no one to hear her screams. Alone, except for the voices in her head that begin to chatter and argue and sneer. That actually sounds really freaky. I'm not gonna lie, that really sounds scary. Ugh. So there's that one. So that's March's. And then from April to October, we're reading um, The Dark Tower. So I'll explain about that afterwards. Then the next book I bought is another one for my my Hollywood collection, because as you know, I collect books on uh, Hollywood because I love movies, Mara Miro being the main thing, but I also collect other biographies and book about various films like The Wizard of Oz, A Star is Born, um, I've got books on the MGM Backlot, and so on. And this one is uh, Tinsel Town by William J. Mann, A Murder, Morphine and Madness at the Dawn of Hollywood. Now I believe that uh, Leslie of a Word of a Reader might be reading this as well soon, if not already. Um, so the, in the early 1920s, Hollywood was threatened by a string of scandals, including the murder of the handsome, secretly haunted actor and director William Desmond Taylor, a crime that went unsolved for nearly a century. Now, in this fiendishly involving New York Times bestseller, Held as a Must Read by Liz Smith, William Mann draws on a rich host of sources, many untapped for decades, to revisit the case of the enigmatic Taylor and the diverse cast that surrounded him, including three loyal ingenues, a devoted valet, a gang of two bit thugs and moguls, Aldif Adolf Zucker and Marcus Lowe. Locked in a struggle for control of the exploding industry along the way, man brings to life Los Angeles in the roaring twenties, a town filled with celebrities, party girls, drug dealers, a dangerous place where the powerful could still run afoul of the desperate. 
So yeah, he's already written some great books. He's written books about William Hayes and Barbara Streisand, uh, Catherine Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor. So now I have read a book about the William Desmond Taylor case before. I've got a book on Hollywood scandals or Hollywood murders, I can't remember which, um, that features the case. That's where I first then, read it. I've also read Cast of Killers, which is an absolutely brilliant book, but I can't remember who it's by. And I don't know where it is. Oh, Sydney D. Kirkpatrick wrote Cast of Killers. Um, so I'm going to compare them both and uh, once I've read this I will let you know. I'm on to the final book because I got a little five and I thought I'd treat myself to a brand new book. I've seen this a lot on booktube and that's Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson um, which is about uh, it's a trilogy and about Lee Westfall has a strong loving family. She has a home she loves and a loyal steed. She has a best friend who might want to be something more but she also has a secret. Lee can sense gold in the world around her. So you can imagine how important she'd be and I think she runs to California. Flees to California where the gold rush is on. Um, so yeah I suppose it's a magical, what they call magical realism book or Terry Pratchett calls it calls it don't call it magical realism it's fantasy that's got to to up it up itself or something along those lines um yeah so i've wanted to read this it's got a beautiful cover i mean the inside's just oh it's got something nice on there it's got like a tree on the cover and gold writing but the, the dust jacket is absolutely beautiful so that's the last book so that's all the books i bought or was sent in January, it's not at the end of January, but I don't anticipate buying any more or getting any more as of yet. So I have actually got less books than I've read so far because I've read 18. I think there's 17 there. <laughs> it's pretty close. But then six, seven of them were sent to me free of charge for reviews, so they don't count. So I haven't spent as much on books this month, although I did buy loads for Paul. So next month I plan to try not to buy many books. But I'm not going to promise it anyway. So um, let me know if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned. If you had, let me know what you think in the comments below. And excuse my voice again. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you very soon. Hopefully, my voice will be better. Have a lovely time reading, and I will see you all soon. Booktube. Bye.